Hey y'all, Fiber Tardy here. This is Crystal back with another video. It's getting really smelly in here. I've got a big pile of trash in here. Big old pile of trashy books. And uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Just kind of some, well, I'll say loose, very loose plans for my Garb August reading, which is going to basically take over my whole month. Um, so um, Garb August is of course coming and I've been, I've been waiting for this event since last Garb August. <laughs> and um, so of course I will link all of our hosts below and all that good stuff. Announcements have been going out. It's just, we have a really awesome bunch of co-hosts this year. They've been putting out some amazing announcement videos. Um, so let's see. So as we know, we, Garb August is, um, again, it's the whole month long. We've got full, you know, themed weeks for you. We've got a Garb Bingo, you know, bingo board. There's all kinds of good stuff going on. And you know, it's really up to you to you, you know, you get as trashy as you want. You know what I mean? No one is, there's no garbage police. Okay. So, um, so again, yeah, I'm just going to dig into this big, 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 big pile of books that I'm gonna just pull from and mood read through through the month. So first of all, I do want to mention our group read again. That is The Devil's Laughter by William W. Johnstone. This is, of course, in honor of our packs that we lost here on BookTube uh, really recently. And um, she was an amazing co-host of Garb August last year. And so she is center square on our Garbingo card uh, as just a place of honor for her. Um, so uh, we're doing the group read, which you can do, which will check, you know, kind of tick that box if you like, or you can read any of the books that she read last year. Um, I will link that list below, I'll put a list below of all the books that she read for Garb August last year. And go back and actually watch her Garb August videos from last year, because they're who, they, re <laughs> they really were. And, um, or, you know, if you're not into any of the books or they may be hard to get to find or whatever, just read a book with green on the cover, because we know, uh, you know, our, our Paxi loved uh, her her she loved her green right so so yeah that's i wanted to mention that first um join us with the devil's laughter or any of her books or anything with green nice and simple and, and before i get going into the you know, sort of themes i want to bring this back up i will be diving back into angora fever the collected short stories of edward d wood jr i read it maybe oh, about halfway through last year yeah about halfway through last year and so i'm going to pick it back up and finish it out this year. Actually, we don't have quite a little over halfway last year, so uh, I I'm excited to get back into these stories. They are they are crazy town. I'm gonna, so let me tell you this first one that I'll be reading. The first up is Invasion of the Sleeping Flesh, which was written under one of his pen names, Angora. I can't wait to get back into these. <laughs> I had a really good time with these uh, last year. They're kind of smutty, kind of crazy crazy stuff. Very enjoyable. Okay, so I basically themed most of my reading around the themed weeks with hoping to kind of tick off some of the Garbingo boards along the way. And uh, so let's just get into it. Okay, so week one, of course, is category romance or men's adventure. I picked a little bit of both, again, just to see where the mood takes you. I've only got a week to read it, but <laughs> I picked quite a lot of category romance just to see kind of what I feel like. What do I feel like, you know, getting into? I don't know. We'll see. Um, like this one. Catherine Fox's Pleasure Control. This is an Avon book. Avon Red. Some fantasies are meant to be shared. Ooh. So that one looks pretty steamy. I've got a newer kind of Harlequin book. Uh, so this one is probably from, let's see, what's the year on this one? 2021. So this was very new, um, part of the Harlequin intrigue line, which um, I think are, are books that kind of have a, kind of a mystery to them, from what from my understanding. Um, and so this one is called it's from Dolores Fawson called Safeguarding the Surrogate. Sounds amazing. I guess we have like a surrogate. She brought him his greatest joy. Now he must save her life. Sounds amazing. He has a cowboy hat on. Uh, I'm here for it. Uh, last year I read an older Harlequin entry book uh, and I have a couple more of these and this one's called Howling in the Darkness by BJ An BJ Daniels. Um, a curse has settled over the small New England town, an unknown force that was about to irrevocably, irrevocably change the lives of four young women and the men captivated 
by their spell. So I feel like intrigues used to have maybe a supernatural twist to them, and then maybe they changed to more of a mystery. I'm not sure. I'll have to check with Sarah over at the Bondage Knitter because she is, of course, a Harlequin aficionado. She knows everything about Harlequin. And uh, but I, I really had fun reading one of these, one of these kind of older intrigue books last year. And so I, I've got. I got this one and maybe another one uh, that I'd like to get into. This is from 2002. It's a little bit older. I've got one of these uh, old silhouette nocturne books. This is called The Empath by Bonnie Vanak. And this is a werewolf book, like a, were a werewolf romance. I'm here for it. I am here for it. This is from 2007. This <laughs> Is he in pain or is he enjoying himself? Or both. I don't know. I've got a really old Harlequin book. This is from 1977, the year that I was born. This book is as old as me. This is Festival of Summer by Charlotte Lamb. I love this old style picture. Look at this haircut. Oh my gosh. Um, nice little red edges. Yeah, this is a really old one. Um, so this, this one will be really fun. Yeah. Um, look at this one. A Harlequin Temptation, which I'm not sure if tempta or Temptation, any, is, that, is that line still in business? I don't know. This is Too Wild to Wed by Jane Ann Krentz. This cover, is this the same guy? Could it be the same guy? I don't know. He gets around. Looks amazing. And finally, a Mills and Boone uh, Temptation Blaze book. This is Outrageous by Lori Foster. What I know from the Blaze liner, these are going to be way more spicier, so a bit more smuttier. And this one's actually pretty smart, pretty short, so um, I think this will be like definite. <laughs> so those are my possibilities of some romance. I, like I said, I do pick about a couple of. Uh, so what I would call like men's adventure type books. Um, I do have a couple of Ed McBain books. Um, this one is Poison, uh, 87th Precinct is what I meant to say. 87th Precinct, um, I don't know which one this is, but um, again, Poison, I love this cover. You see there's like this skull and the flower. Um, I read my very first 87th Precinct book earlier this year and it, and it was fun. Um, so I wouldn't mind reading another one to see what the 87th Precinct is up to and this one this one's from 1987 and it's not crazy long about 250 pages oh if you're ever curious what Edmund Mang looks like there you go um I have this book a John Creasy novel a tough mystery suspense novel uh the tough and the toughs and I picked this one because it has a gang it's got <laughs> and that's one of the Garbingo boards is up to read a book about a gang <laughs> um so you know this is a possibility. It feels it feels men's ish, right? There's a knife going into an orange. I'm not sure what's going on on the cover, but whatever. Uh, this feels men's adventure-y. I mean, I don't know. This is a Rex Stout book, The President Vanishes. Um, I don't know. Could be. I don't have a lot of men's adventure stuff. You know, I mean, I'm just I'm kind of working with what I got with. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so this is from. This is actually copyright 1834, so this is a really old story. Could be fun. Could be just an old mystery. The President of the United States has vanished as the guns of war began to fire in Europe. Wild rumors spread throughout the nation's capital. I mean, I don't know. It could be a fun mystery. Mm -hmm. And I, I've got several Alistair MacLean books that I picked up at like, like thrift stores and bits, and I, I kind of want to get to one of them. And I think it might be this one, Circus. One, it has this incredible cover of a circus, and there's like a bridge exploding. There's a gun on the cover. <laughs> um, there's a Volkswagen Beetle. Yeah, I mean, it's just a fun cover. Um, and... <laughs> So uh, the guy, the Bru Bruno is this guy, he's the world's greatest trapeze artist, a clairvoyant with near supernatural powers and an implacable enemy of the Eastern European regime has arrested his family and murdered his wife. The CIA needs such a man. So he's recruited for this and he's like going undercover in the circus. <laughs> it sounds wacky. It actually sounds really fun. So <laughs> it sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, this is from 1975. This one, it sounds fun. Okay, so those are some of the picks for Ms. Adventure. Um, yeah. 
Okay, so week two, we're going to focus on paperbacks from hell, those really classic old vintage horror books, which I have many to choose from. I picked just a few. <laughs> and, or vintage smut. Now, I don't have a lot of vintage smut, um, but I picked a few that I think maybe could be smutty. Maybe. I'm not totally sure, but they could be. So, um, this could be more of a category romance book. I'm not sure. But this one is called Shadows Along the Ice. Uh, it also has like a... Um, so following a woman who's a sports a sports reporter, she's interviewing this hockey guy, um, but at an unguarded moment, the golden eye warmth takes the chill from her body and her heart. It feels like it's just going to be really smutty. I don't know. <laughs> it's also really old. Not really old, but let's see. There isn't even a... There's, I don't know, the page is probably missing from the date on this because actually page number one is already falling out. <laughs> so it's quite old. Um, I don't know. It could. I just feel like it could be more smutty, more smutty than anything. Um, I picked this one up recently, uh, Groomed for Murder by Vivian Rose, a laid back LA mystery with two fast paced New York sleuths. There's a mystery element, but I just, I don't know. I feel like it could just be probably kind of smutty too. It may not be, it may just not be smutty at all. But um, I'm going to say maybe it's possibly smutty. And uh, this is definitely going to be, I think, a little bit smutty. This is an Easy Company book. So Easy Company and The Headline Hunter by John Wesley Howard. This is Cowboy Trash. I think it's probably going to, um, I think it's probably going to be a bit more smutty than, uh, <laughs> than not. But we'll see. I don't know. I didn't get to this to June on the, for June on the Range. So. <laughs> okay, so for Paperbacks from Hell, I have quite a bit more to choose from. Um, and actually, Kelsey over at Slimy Splashers, uh, she has a book club, and she has picked Fear by Ronald Kelly as one of her picks. Um, the vintage cover for that is amazing. Um, so I definitely want to read this. She's chunky, but I don't know. I want to get to it because I've heard nothing but actually amazing things about this book, even though... It's, you know, a vintage paperback from hell. Uh, Robert Kelly is an old zebra author. He wrote for Zebra way back in the day. Um, but I've heard this book is astounding. So I've just been really wanting to read it. I keep putting it off. So if I can get to it, I definitely want to. Um, and a part of a book club will be fun. And she has also picked uh, a John Ferris book, I, I think, for this month. Um, all Heads Turn When the Hunt Goes By by John Ferris. So I do have that. I really don't know that I'll get to this one because well, I also have another John Ferris possibly picked out. Uh, and this is Son of the Endless Night by John Ferris. This is an amazing cover. Look at these like wings that are coming over. And uh, to pluck off the Garbingo Bingo card would be a book with a step back cover. So this was long, so I may not get to it, but you know, Alex over at the Boob Anus, um, had you know, asked about buddy reading this one and so if we get to it we'll get to it I think um I really would like to maybe if I just started at the beginning of the month <laughs> kind of read a little bit you know, each day or something but if we get to this one we will but if not it might get pushed to September but I love this face of this woman oh my god or this girl whatever she is <laughs> crazy town okay now I've also just again I picked just some things to mood read from um, I think this could be fun. It's called Child of Darkness by David uh, B. Silva. Was he just a troubled little boy or the deadly spawn of Satan? It would pick out, it would check off the Garbingo board spot of like book about a killer kid. <laughs> and then of course a Rupert or Richard Lehman, which would fill the Garbingo card slot to read a book by Richard Lehman. Uh, I've never read a Richard Lehman. I'm really nervous to read a Richard Lehman. This was also really long too, so... Uh, I don't know. Um, maybe if I can find an audio or something. This is Darkness Don't Tell Us. I picked, I have two Richard Layman and that's all I have. Uh, I picked this one because it has to deal with a Ouija board. I figured that could be fun. How could he mess up a book about a Ouija board? By putting boobs in it, right? Anyway, so those are, those are some possibilities for paperbacks from hell. No, I have a sh I literally like two shelves full of paperbacks, <laughs> little horror paperbacks that I could choose from. These are just the ones that Mm, kind of more calm my eye, I guess. Okay, week number three. Uh, novelizations or a book by a famous person. So I have pulled one book by a famous person. A recent thrift store purchase is Just Fly Away by Andrew McCarthy. And if you're saying to yourself, 
that Andrew McCarthy? Yes, that Andrew McCarthy from the Brat Pack, from all those wonderful movies like Mannequin, St. Elmo's Fire, and Pretty in Pink. Blaine? His name is Blaine? Anyway, so <laughs> this, uh, this looks like it might be like a middle grade book. I'm not even really sure. I don't even know what it's about. I picked it up because I saw Andrew McCarthy and I was like, that Andrew McCarthy? And yes, yes it is. <laughs> this looks like a newer book. Um, I know he has like a memoir out too, which maybe I could read this and then like listen to the memoir too. Oh my God, that would be amazing. So this came out in 2017. So it's, you know, it's new-ish. Um, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but what else have I picked for novelization? Let me find my stack of things. They're over here. No, they're over here. Okay. Again, I've just kind of picked a big stack of things. Um, to kind of to kind of choose from where the mood where the mood takes me, and they're novelization, and also just kind of tie in media as well. Like I've got, um, I do have this novelization of X Files: Fight the Future. Um, I love that movie. Oh, it's got pictures from the movie in there. I've watched that movie in a long time. So, this, of course, the screen, screenplay by Chris Carter, um, adapted by Elizabeth Hand. Um, yeah. It's just over 200 pages. Definitely won't take me long to get to. I love the X-Files. That could be fun. Um, I picked this up, I think, sometime last year, the movie uh, novelization of Interstellar. I love this movie. It has quickly become one of my favorites since it came out. Um, the official movie novelization. Novelization by Greg Keyes, um, based on the film from Warner Brothers. Yeah, so I love this book. I love this movie. I absolutely love this movie, and I would I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind reading that. Uh, last Garb August, I read a Doctor Who book, so maybe I could read another Doctor Who book this year. I've got Doctor Who and the Invasion of Time uh, by Terence Dix. I had really a lot of fun with the with the last one I read, which was a novelization of basically the first uh, episode of Doctor Who. Um, so this came out in 1979. Doctor Who's always fun. Um, I have Star Trek, of course. Uh, book Trek is still going on in, in August, so I could definitely pull this out for Book Trek. It also has a book with a title that has an exclamation mark, which would be a Garbingo card. Uh, Dreadnought, the new Star Trek novel by Diane Carey. I love this lady on the cover. I love it. Um, so there's that. And another Star Trek, maybe I could read a Voyager book. I don't know. We'll have to see where Star Trek goes. And last year I read one of these. I'm going to try to read another one. Another Saved by the Bell book. Um, this is exactly, will Zach lose Kelly to a rich hunk? I'm dying to know. I'm dying to know. Uh, and just recently, I, I found this. This is called Be Good, Gertie. This is a little E.T. book. It's a little kid's book. Why not read this too? Yeah, so these are, are some options for novelizations and tie-ins and all that kind of good stuff. Next, of course, is Anything Goes, and these were really, uh, Anything Goes is really more than just a week. It's like, you know, the fourth week to the, just the end of the month. So it's kind of almost, I think, closer to two weeks. <laughs> if Anything Goes, I've just pulled a bunch of wacky stuff that doesn't necessarily fit the other categories, but, you know, we're going to see. I'd like to get some old school science fiction, I think would be fun to read for Anything Goes. Like I have Lensman, the famous Lensman series. This is number one. This is by E.E. E. Doc Smith, Triplanetary. Uh, amazing cover. Um, amazing cover. Uh, this is um, from 1948. So really, some really vintage science fiction there. Um, I've got this book called Danny Dunn, The Invisible Boy by J. Williams and Raymond Abrashkin, illustrated by Paul Sagurian. Oh my gosh. Um, I love, again, another amazing cover. I think maybe, I can tell, maybe this is, I think, a kid's book because it does have some really cool. Oh, it used to belong to Kimberly Sellers. <laughs> this was, came out in 1974. Um, it's just, yeah, just a little kind of kids kind of adventure book. Last year I did read a gothic romance. Um, I wouldn't mind reading another one of those. I really enjoyed the one I read last year. 
I have several Victoria Hunt, Victoria Holt books. Um, this is Kirkland Rebels um, by Victoria Holt. Um, an Alfred Hitchcock-like amalgam of love, hate, and suspense. So there she is fleeing from her castle. Um, yeah, I, I had a lot of fun with the gothic that I read last year. Wouldn't mind digging into another one of those. Um, I did start this last Garbagus, but I just did, I ran out of time. So I'd probably just restart it. I only got a couple, a few chapters in, but this is a fantasy book, an old fantasy book called Silver Glass by J.F. Rifkin, um, blurbed by Piers Anthony. Um, a swordswoman for hire, the journey of a lifetime. Boobs. Um, I don't have a book with a nudity on the cover. I'm just, I'm aghast that I don't. <laughs> So I wouldn't mind kind of getting back into that one and finishing that one out. It seems like a really fun fantasy. From I was enjoying it from when I started it. I have things like this, like Frederick Brown's The Mind Thing, <laughs> terrifying novel of being from a, of a being from another galaxy with an unthinkably horrible plan for Earth. I would say this cashes in on the moral panic. Um, uh, the that kind of Garbingo. Um, look at this. He really was an it. Oh, yeah, that sounds fun. Uh, I have the Hef Hephaestus Plague by Thomas Page. This sounds like an animal tech book. In <laughs> in space. I think it's a science fiction. Let me see. They are blind carbon eating insects, each one capable of emitting a tiny flame. Oh, so there's the flame that's coming out of his butt. Um, uh, mysteriously incapable of reproducing, their storm is relentless and unstoppable, leaving a wake of death and charred ruin. Scientists struggle to destroy them before they destroy the Earth. All but one man. He has discovered the creature's remarkable intelligence and a way to breed them. Oh, that doesn't sound... That doesn't sound good. I think it's a, kind of a spin on an animal attack book, which is, again, a Garbingo square. Could be fun. I feel like an L.D. Foster, like old science fiction book would be fun. Uh, because this one has a giant like praying mantis type bug on the cover. I don't know. Sounds, am <laughs> sounds amazing. This is called Nor Crystal Tears. The Meeting of Man and Thranx. Um, the Beginning of the Humex Commonwealth. A brilliant first contact novel. I really, I like first contact books in general. Um, and I really, I've got a bunch of Alan E. Foster books, like some of his old science fiction books. I just never read them. This is from 1982. Um, it just sounds great. So the insect liked thranks. So these are what the thranks are. It just, it just sounds really like a lot of fun. I feel like a Robin Cook, like, you know, some of these, some kind of medical thriller, I think would fit really well with anything goes. So this is um, brain. And it's, so basically, like, uh, Martin Phillips and Denise Sanger were doctors, lovers, and desperately afraid. Both of them suspect, suspected that something was wrong, terribly wrong, in the great medical research center where they worked. Both of them wondered why a beautiful young woman had died on the operating table and had her brain secretly removed. Both of them found it impossible to explain the rash of female patients exhibiting bizarre mental breakdowns and shocking sexual behavior. Maybe I should put this in the vintage smut. I don't know. <laughs> Both of them were placing their careers and buried lives in deadly jeopardy as they penetrated the eerie inner sanctums of a medical world gone mad with technological power and the lust for more brain. Sounds fun. That sounds fun, yeah. And last year I read a Nancy Drew Files uh, book. I think it would be fun to read another Nancy Drew Files. This would check off the Garbingo and Border reading a uh, book from a series that more of a hundred of more than a hundred entries. Because I think this one last I I think it does have more than a hundred. I need to double check. Uh, I really enjoy these Nancy Drew Files book, and I, I think they're more Garbagus material because they are a bit more. Maybe it's soap opera-y, you know what I mean? Like Nancy's a bit older, she's not as a kid, she's not a kid anymore. There's, you know, romance thrown in here with like a boyfriend and and, and things like that. And the um, uh, the mysteries are a bit more serious, you know, like things actually kind of happen, right? <laughs> so um, so she's searching for a killer in this one. So, um, so I would, wouldn't mind getting into another Nancy Drew Files book too, if anything goes. And then again, that is my big old pile of trash over here. And who knows where the month will take me though. I'm not locking myself into much of anything. I forgot to mention that I'm going to be reading this too. V.C. Andrews, buddy reading this with Kelly from Kelly Have No Books. 
Ruby by V.C. Andrews. With this. So I hope uh, I hope you're getting ready. I hope maybe this gives you some ideas of some things that what is trash if you're like kind of stuck on like what are what are we talking about here? Um, so yeah, I hope that you'll join us. Thanks so much for watching today. Appreciate your time as always. And uh, yeah, let's get trashy together. All right, bye friends. <laughs>